Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nay Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today is Thursday that you're watching this video, fingers crossed. <laughs> and um, I do want to, one, apologize for my voice. I am coming down with a cold, I think, and I just burnt my throat with my coffee because I made my coffee extremely too hot and didn't think about it before I swallowed it. So, yeah, my tongue is a little burnt, my throat is a little burnt, um, my nose is a little bit stuffed up, so I apologize, but I still wanted to get this video up for you guys, so hopefully I don't sound too weird. Um, I do have a bottle of water because that coffee really burnt the mess out of my throat. So, yeah, um... Okay, so today's video is going to finally be, I guess, my review of the Rose Book of Bible Tries Maps and Timelines. This is volume one. They do have two other volumes, volume two and volume three. I do have a ebook version of it, but um that the publishing company Rose Publishing sent me, but I really do want to get my hands on physical copies, so I'm debating if I'm gonna do that or not. Um, I will leave links to where you can get this on Amazon as well as on christianbook.com so you can check those link links out down below. But um, this is the expanded 10th anniversary edition. I got mine at Walmart. This was not sent to me. Um, I did contact the company like I said and they sent me volumes 2 and 3 in a PDF form for review. But I purchased this myself from Walmart. The retail price on here is $22.99, but I think I got it for like $17 or $18 at Walmart because, you know, Walmart always has like discounts on their little books. So if you have like a Walmart you can run to, um, definitely check the little trolley, the little book trolleys that they have by like the checkout section where they keep most of the Christian books. That's where I found mine at. They still have a lot of these um, at my store. I may pick up one or two of these and do a giveaway on it, but um yeah, here he is. Here he is. <laughs> here we are. So, um, again, if you guys hear beeping, I apologize. All the other smoke detectors were reset before this video, but that one smoke detector in front of the house just beeped, so hopefully it's not too bad. But here we are. Gorgeous. Um, I will say this does get messy, does get dirty really fast. I apologize about the ring light. I have that on so that you can see it better. But, um, yeah, it's a really nice 30 book, um... On the back, you get some information about what it includes. Um, so there's full color illustrations, maps, overviews, some topics, comparison charts, and um, things like that. So we're just going to open this up right away. So like I said, this is going to be a review. I initially wanted to do a first impressions, but I've had this for a couple of months now, and I've actually been enjoying this. I've been using this when I read my biblical fiction, when I'm doing Bible studies like this is amazing for me. But um, when you first get it, there is this cardboard in the front that just keeps everything um, from like bending, which I kind of like that, and I kind of kept mine in there. But um, the first thing you get is this pull-out Bible timeline that is extremely long, but um, it is the timeline of the Bible. Pretty much. So the blue portions are the Bible history. The yellow portions are the world history. And then the, the green portions are the Middle East history. And then on the opposite side, you get a pullout of the tabernacle. Which is mentioned in Exodus 25-40 and Hebrews 9-13. So you just get a quick brief overview of what the tabernacle look like, looked like. Okay, so going back, you have the cover page. Again, this is from Hendrickson Publishing, Rose Publishing. Hendrickson Rose is like one publishing company together, but they also have subdivisions, if that makes sense. Um, your copyright information here. Then you have your content. So it's broken down into, I think, five or six portions. So you have your Bible overview, which is in green. Um, this kind of brownish yellow is Old Testament. You have your New Testament with the blue. Move on to maps with this red. This purple is going to be Christianity, cults, and religions. You have a map index in this golden yellow and then subject index in brown. So starting with the Bible overview, you get exactly that, an overview of the Bible. So you have the Old Testament, the Old Testament, and the New Testament broken down by color and by, um, I don't want to say genre, but you guys get what I'm saying, right? How, like, you have the Pentateuch, the historical poetry, and all that. So, it's broken down like that. Then, following that, you get more of a who, what, when, where, why of each um, 
book with the outline as well as the key verse, which I think is very useful for those who are like just starting out with Bible study. This would be great to just look at. And it corresponds with the colors that you see here. So you have a green for the Pentateuch, this kind of burnt orange for the historical books, poetry and wisdom, major prophets, all the minor prophets are on one page, which I get why they did that, but the font is a little tiny. <laughs> you have the Gospels and Acts, and Acts would be the history for the New Testament. Paul's epistles letters, so from Romans, uh, and Romans, first, second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Then you have the general epistles and revelation. So like the epistles by James, Hebrews, first, second Peter, first, second, third, John, Jude, and Revelation. Then you have this gorgeous bookcase right here, which showcases the different um I'm going to say genres. I don't know what the proper word is. So if you guys know the proper word, let me know. But they just have the books of the Bible. Um, Kind of like how people who do bullet journaling or like book journals create those things. It's kind of set up like that. And I think it's really nice. I think I might even want to trace this and add this into like my bullet journal and then color in as I study. I think that'd be cool. I might do that. So we'll see. We'll definitely see about that. But um, moving on. Next page, hope you guys can see this. Uh, let me zoom in one more time for you guys to see. Hope you can see this a little bit better. Um, there's a lot of information here, so I'm really trying to like get it all in there for you guys. I think I could zoom in one more time. There we go. So, here we are. My throat is burning. Oh, that coffee. <laughs> but we have how we got the Bible. Ten key points. So, it just gives you ten key points about how we got the Bible. And then, over here, some... Um, illustrations then it goes through the times then you have the origin and growth of the Bible the English Bible um, so basically it's telling you when all the different translations came out so the RSV the amplified the NEB which I don't know what the NEB is the NASB the LB, the NIB, the New King James. So, like, it's giving you the, the, the dates or the years that each of these were, like, created. Then it gives you also the Dead Sea Scrolls and all of that. Over here, you have the comparison of the Old Testament canon. So, this is Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant Bibles that all contain the same 27 New Testament books. So, yeah. I know that some um, Bibles have like other different, what's the word, other additional books in them. I know like the Catholic Bible definitely has additional books in them, like the Maccabees. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so it's just giving you that side by side look of each. Then you go into the Bible, the different Bible translations, um, when they were done, the type of translation and the description, which I think is highly, highly useful. I know for me, sometimes I don't know which ones are word for word or thought for thought or like an in-between. So like the King James is a word for word. The American Standard is a word for word. Um, the Amplified is a word for word plus amplification of meaning. You have the NASB, which is a word for word. The Good News Translation is Thought for Thought. The NIV is a balance, apparently. The New King James is a word for word. Um, the God's Word is a balance. The NIVR, N-I-R-V, sorry, is a thought for thought. Um, the message is definitely a paraphrase, which I'm glad they put, and it just says recreate. Like, it gives you def um, descriptions for each. And then at the bottom, it tells you exactly what a word for word is, thought for thought, a balance, and a paraphrase is. Moving on, you get 100 key people in the Bible. So they start from Aaron, Abel, Abraham, Adam, Balaam, Beth, Sheba, Belshazzar, Boaz. And this is in alphabetical order, so it's not in the order of how they appear in the Bible. It's in alphabetical order. So you go from Aaron all the way to Zerubbabel um, for the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, you got an Ananias all the way to Zechariah. So I like that they give you that. They also give you 100 prayers in the Bibles, which is something that I definitely plan to actually do an in-depth 
study on. I plan to spend 100 days learning the prayers of the Bible um, and actually utilizing them. So they give you from each book of the Bible, from Genesis all the way to Revelations, which I think is brilliant because it helps you to learn different prayers in the bible and what those prayers are for i am very heavy on learning prayer in the bible you guys know i'm not i feel like i'm not the best at verbally praying but reading other prayers within the bible helps me a lot so i'm definitely going to use this to do like a personal study i may even do it on um youtube for you guys Following that, you have the tables of weights and measures. So you have your weights, your length, your liquid measures, followed by dry measure, and then your money in the, bi in the Bible. So the Old Testament and the New Testament, which is great. Because half the time when they mention these things, I don't know what they mean. Um, so I feel like it's kind of great when you're able to come here and do the math in your head to correlate it to modern times. I know I did that a lot with Ruth um, when they were talking about the bushels that she received um, when she was getting the the uh what is it called <laughs> basically when she was working in the field um on boaz's field and they talked about the bushels i kind of like that and then also in like um proverbs or song of solomon i believe they talk about like the different numbers and prices and stuff i just i like knowing that um following that you have names of god so adonai l l i don't know how to say that one never heard of that one el <laughs> elion elohim el, el olam El Roy, El Shaddai, Emmanuel, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, and so forth. A lot of us know this. So you get the name of God, the meaning, the application, the Bible reference, and then comments. And they tell you how to pronounce it and other things like that. Following that, you have Jesus and the names of God. So Jesus being referred to as God, um, which is Jesus is um, life-giving. He's eternal. He is God. He is El Shaddai. He is Emmanuel. He is Yahweh. Um, Jehovah Rapha, sorry. Um, then you have the Holy Spirit in the names of God. And I know that I believe in volume two, they actually give you different names for Jesus outside of Jesus being the, you know, different names of God. Hopefully that just made sense. But um, yeah, then you have for this, you have the Holy Spirit in the names of God, which is the Holy Spirit, the scripture and it, the related name of God. So following that, you get 52 key Bible stories, which I think is great if you're looking to do like a 52 week kind of study. Um, which is kind of like once a week you're reading something in the Bible, doing a study. So I think this would be great for like a 52-week devotional study where you will go, okay, say we want to talk about crossing the Red Sea. You would go to Exodus 13, 17 to 14, 31. Read that. Come back here. Read the summary. Read the main points and do your own kind of personal study on that. So we have that. They tell you the storyteller, the characters, and the story. So, I mean, you have 12 here. You know, and then they give you some pictures, artwork throughout. So again, there are 52 of those. Following that, you have 100 proofs for the Bible in the Old Testament. So you get the archaeological find, the description of that find, and the importance of the find. And again, this is great for people who try to argue that the bible just doesn't exist or that the bible was never real um they literally have a hundred proofs that it was and i just think it's great i personally haven't gone through this yet just because it's so much word so many words um i would definitely have to take my time getting through this but um i think it's great and it's also telling you from which book of the bible you can expect it it's really really tiny here on the side so um for number three, it says, Ur, the hometown of Abraham, which is mentioned apparently in Genesis and Nehemiah. It tells you about it, what they found, um, the description of it, and then the importance of it. So I like that they have this in here. So they give you 50 from the Old Testament. If you guys can see, 50. And then they give you 50 from the New Testament again. And it tells you again exactly which book you can find that information in, which I think is great. So it's proving that the Bible and Jesus was real. <sighs> no matter what scientists or other people say. Then you get the Christian history timeline from AD 1 all the way unto AD... Um, no, nope, yeah, it still goes. So it goes from AD 1 all the way to AD... 1900 which i think is great um and then you dive into the old testament so for here you have old 100 old testament events so event one all the way to 100 with the corresponding scriptures 
Um, then you have this, which is about the creation, and it tells you from day one through seven. And I really like this illustration. It's really, really pretty. I think if you're teaching, like, a children's Bible Sunday school, Bible Sunday school, if you teach um, Sunday school for children or you have, like, youth church, this would be great to just make a copy of and print out for them just to have or just for yourself um, to help you teach, if that makes sense. Um, then you have this illustration of Noah's Ark and information about the Noah's Ark. Um, so we have that. Then, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the Old Testament portion, um, outside of another one. The reason being is because it goes into the 12 tribes of Israel. And I know for me, when I'm reading a lot of my biblical fiction, um, they talk about the different tribes of Israel. And I just love coming here and, as I'm reading those books, seeing the different characters and the different biblical people um, being mentioned and being able to come here to learn more about them, if that makes sense. So, you have the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, and then they talk about the breastplate of the high priest, the timeline of it. This gives you some more information about that. Then you have the families of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who was Israel, um, starting with Abram and Sarah. And then they tell you he was renamed Abraham and Sarah. Then you have Isaac and Jacob. It tells you that um, Jacob fled to Haran, that he married Leah, and then he had four sons first. And that's what I like, is that they tell you the order in which Jacob had his 12 sons, which I love. Plus, he had a daughter as well. So, um, I love that they do that. They also mention that Abram got with Hagar and had Ishmael, who was in cast out, and he's the father of the Arabs, which I never knew that. Um, Isaac married Rebekah, and he had Jacob and Esau, and Esau is the father of the Edomites. Then Jacob obviously married Leah, and then had Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Then he married uh, Rachel and had, no, not Rachel. He married Bila, who was a handmaiden, and had Don and Naphtali. I think that's how you say that. He got with Zilpha, and that was a handmaiden, and he had Gad and Asher. Then he had two more with Leah, which were Ish, 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 Ishachar and Zebulon. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Then he got with Rachel and had Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph married someone here and then he had Manasseh and Ephraim then it comes on here and tell you that Jacob's name was renamed Israel so I just I love that it does this. this this makes my heart happy and then this goes deeper into the 12 tribes um giving you the meaning the symbol um their stone and color their family and then it tells you like the size the location the blessing um, from Jacob, the blessing from Moses, and notable information, which I just, I love. Stuff like that just makes me excited, you guys. I don't know about you, but when I'm learning about, like, the different people in different tribes, I like learning what their names mean, um, the colors, because I feel like a lot of the times when you're reading the Bible and you understand what their names mean, their names have everything to do with their character. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. Um, their names have everything to do with their character, which I just absolutely love. So, um... You have that. So you have Reuben and si Simeon. I don't know if it's Simeon or Simon. I don't know. <laughs> Levi and Judah. Dan, Naphtali, and God. I'm probably saying that one wrong. But I just, I love looking at the different symbols as well. Like Judah is a lion, obviously. Levi, um, they were the Levites. And they are the breastplate of the high priest. Um, Reuben is the water. Simon is the lapis, not, I'm sorry, it's the gate of Shechem. You know, Gad is uh, the tents. You have Naphtali as the deer, Dan as the snake. Joseph, obviously, is um, the sheaf of grain. Benjamin is a wolf. Like, I just, oh, it makes me so happy just to look at this. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm like gushing because I love it. Um, then you talk about the Exodus. So you have this map here, which literally just goes through the Exodus, um, and it tells you, from Egypt to Kadesh, Kadesh to Alath, and Alath to Jericho. Then it gives you the timeline and the key people, which are Moses, Aaron, Pharaoh, Miriam, and Joshua, who was a son of Nun. Then you go into the tabernacle, which is the same thing from this original pullout over here. The ta This was just like a full-blown like image of the tabernacle, whereas this goes into depth. You see these different numbers in red and yellow. You would turn the page, 
and here's everything it literally breaks down the key and helps you understand each part of the tabernacle which i really do love as well because a lot of the times when i'm reading books or studying i don't know what they're talking about so being able to visually see these things helps me so much then you have the tabernacle pattern of worship The garments of the high priest, the tabernacle, I guess what it looked like, the sacrifices that they did in the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the journey of the Ark of the Covenant from Mount Sinai. Then you have the Ten Commandments from Exodus 23 through 17. Then you have all of the judges. And this is something that I personally think I need to learn because I don't know that many. The only judges I knew of were Deborah, Gideon, and Samson. Those were the only judges that I knew of, but clearly there were other judges that I didn't know, so this was important for me to learn. Um, it talks about the different feasts of the Bible. Um, for me, the different feasts, it intrigues me, but it's not something that I care too much for, so I'm kind of happy that they have this. It tells you the holiday, the date that it's observed, the scripture basis, the general information, information concerning jesus and then the fascinating facts of it so you have passover the unleavened bread the first fruits the first the feast of weeks or known as pentecost um you have the feast of trumpets the day of atonement the feast of booths or of tabernacles the feast of dedication the feast of lots then you have the feast and holidays calendar so it's all here in different type of years and whatnot. I don't under I don't really know what this means, honestly. Um then you go into the prophets. Um the prophet prophesied to the date, um, as far as like how long they were prophets and then their home location. Which the only ones I knew of were well, we I know all of these, but I have not studied Haggai, I have not studied Obadiah, I have not learned much about Nahum or Micah. Um the rest of them I have heard of and know a little bit of though then you go into the kings of the united and divided kingdoms so you have the united kingdoms which obviously were Saul David and then Solomon and then the divided kingdom you have the kings of Israel and then the kings of Judah so Israel is the northern kingdom and then Judah is the southern kingdom then you have this which is kings and prophets um, I'm not sure exactly what this is I guess the timeline with the years so then you go into Solomon's temple with information about each of those pieces. And this portion goes to the numbers that you see here on the image. Um, this is Jesus in the temple. They break down Psalms 23 on two pages. So Psalms 23, so that you have the actual like portion of the scripture, the shepherd's care and the application. Then it talks about the shepherd's duties and Jesus' actions um, and the imagery of the Old Testament and the New Testament shepherds. Statue in the book of Daniel, they tell you where it's from, and it's the head of fine gold, the chest and arms of silver, the belly and thighs of bronze, the legs of iron, and feet of iron clay, and then the stone, and it literally breaks it down for you. So the, the head of fine gold is from Babylonia. The chest and arms of silver from Medo-Persia. The belly and thighs of bronze from Greece. The legs of iron and feet of iron and clay is from Rome. And then the stone cut out is the everlasting kingdom. And it literally breaks it down, the, back, the historical black background um, and the entire meaning of it, which I love. And then the statue and the visions of the beast. Then you dive into the New Testament. So here you have a genealogy of Jesus um, according to the Gospel of Matthew as well as according to the Gospel of Luke. So you know that Matthew has a little bit whereas Luke gives you a lot more because it's telling you how they have these that um, line up. So they have from Abraham to King David the same and then you have these two, Zerubbabel and I don't know the other person the same. And then you come down here to Joseph and Jesus. <laughs> This is a genealogy of Jesus, and this is another thing that I use a lot when I am reading biblical fiction because it literally is a complete genealogy, and um, it is on both sides. Let me see if I can... Yeah, I can't even get the whole thing in because it's like here, right? But um, it starts over here with Cain. 
right here you can I don't know if you guys can see but over here it says Cain so it starts there well actually it starts from Adam and Eve and then it says they had Cain Abel and then Seth and other sons and daughters um, and then you follow the green because the green will take you to Jesus um, here you have an arrow which means to turn to the next page but what I really like is that when I'm reading I can come here and like when they talk about the 12 tribes of Judah, the 12 tribes of Judah, the 12 tribes of Israel from Jacob, I can go and follow this and all of these at the top, including his daughter Dina, is here. And a lot of the times biblical fiction includes a lot of these characters, um, characters, a lot of these important people from the Bible. So I love just using this as well when I'm reading biblical fiction. But yes, there's another side. <laughs> So again, like the green, like I said, the green line follows through all the way to Jesus. So I personally just love that so much. Then you have 100 prophecies fulfilled by Jesus. So you have the prophecy, the Old Testament reference, and the New Testament fulfillment. And then there is a color key as well that tells you prophecies more than 1,200 years before Jesus, prophecies more than 800 years before Jesus, and prophecies 500 years before Jesus, which I think is great. So, yeah, it just talks about Jesus' birth, um, then his life and ministry, his death and resurrection, and then the titles and attributes of him. Then we have the events in the life of Jesus with the Gospels um, side by side so you can figure out like where you can find them at. The miracles of Jesus. So, healing power over nature and the raising of the dead. The parables of Jesus, again, with the um, gospel side by side. Then we go into the Beatitudes, the 12 disciples. And then, obviously, you get more information about each disciple. And this is something I use as well because I know for a fact that, who is it? Bartholomew. I swear, in one gospel, he's mentioned as Bartholomew. In another, he's mentioned as Nathaniel. So, this was very helpful to understand, you know, because, like, Matthew is also named Levi like I don't I don't get it <laughs> you know but um it just talks about what their other names are general information their personality and character their encounters with Jesus the key lesson that they have learned or you can learn from them I believe and then the stories concerning them then you have other disciples in the New Testament um so these were like other followers of Jesus then the apostles and evangelists and teachers and then important leaders um so yeah let me see did i know about any of these james yes lazarus mary 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 all the marys <laughs> um salome which i think was his aunt priscilla yes i know about her and Aquila. barnabas i know about um paul who was saul titus so yeah um then you have the lord's prayer broken down Herod's temple and I love looking at Herod's temple in a lot of Bibles because they just they really help me to visualize it so much so this is an area of you showing outer courts and this is the actual temple itself this is Palm Sunday to Easter so I'm um, walking with Jesus each day so it starts from day one to two to three four you have five, six, seven, eight. So it goes from the triumphal entry, the clearing of the temple, the day of the controversy and parables, the day of rest, which was on Wednesday. Then you have the Last Supper, the crucifixion, the tomb, and then the resurrection that Sunday. So it literally walks you through it. Jesus' hours on the cross. Um... I'm still learning this myself. I've glanced at it, but I haven't really like gone in depth looking at it. But um, I like this. I really do. So the crucifixion was at 9 a.m. Um, and then 3 p.m. Jesus is, Jesus dies. So I like that they have that there with a the key at the bottom. Evidence for the res resurrection. So the skeptics, objections, and then answers for them. More evidence. 100 events from Acts to Revelations, which I like that they have that. The Armor of God, which who does not love the Armor of God? I think this is another um, thing you could probably like, make a copy of and give out to children to learn. Um, the Love Chapter, which we should know is 1 Corinthians 13. Um, so what it is, how to love in the scripture concerning love. 
the fruits of the spirits from Galatians, and then the examples of the fruits of the spirit that Jesus exhibited. Then they talk about the bad fruits, which I think is great that they have this, because not many people understand what the bad fruits are. You have the heroes of faith from Hebrews 11, the seven churches of Revelation. More about the seven churches. So you have um, the church, the strengths, faults, the instruction, the promise to them, and background information about each church. The four views of the end times, which is the historical, the dispensational, the uh, millennialism. I'm probably saying that. And then the post. I've, yep. <laughs> Then you have those again side by side in a chart. Glossary of end times word, which I think for me is something I really need to know. The biblical descriptions of heaven and then the biblical descriptions of hell, which is useful because people like to say what heaven is and then people like to tell you what hell is. But what does the Bible really say about it? Moving on to maps. This is another thing that I love because it has the then and nows and I use this a lot when I'm reading just to know more about it. So this is a map of the Middle East and Central Asia all together. The Middle East then and the Middle East now. So I love this so much. <laughs> you guys don't understand. Because I like looking at, like when I'm reading biblical fiction, I like seeing the land for what it was. But sometimes I get curious as to, well, what would that place look like now? So I could come here and see that the Arabian Desert is now broken down between Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Yemen, Oman, and the United um, Arab Emirates, I think. Kush is now separated into Ethiopia, Sudan, and something else. You know, I, I just I like looking at that. You have the Holy Land then and now. And it also lets you know which um, places still exist in this day and age which is great so like Mount Carmel still exists um, Sidon I think that's that's what that says still exists Tyre still exists Damascus still exists but like other places like Don and stuff they're now inside of Lebanon so I just I like that they have that the Holy Land United Kingdom and then the divided kingdom the expansion of the Assyrian Empire and I guess it's under each of the different kings. So, I don't know these kings. I, I, I don't know. So, <laughs> and then the Babylonian Empire and the Persian Empire. And I love looking at these when I'm reading because a lot of the books that I read always talk about the different people from Babylonia or like Persia. Middle East and fascinating facts and figures. Where Jesus walked in and what it would look like now. The worlds of the first Christians then, and then the world, what it looks like now. Paul's first journey, second journey, third journey, and his journey to Rome. And then Paul's travels and missionary journeys. And then we get into the Christianity, cults, and religions. And this part I actually do find um, an interest in only because I love the way it helps you to truthfully understand things and be able to explain them without argument. I love it. So um, I'll show you guys briefly. So here we have um, how to test the prophets, um, how to recognize false gospel, and how to become a Christian. Then you have the different um, religions and cults and stuff. So they give you the key person or founder, date and location, the key writings, who is God, who is Jesus, who was the Holy Spirit, how to be saved, what happens after death, and other facts, beliefs, and practices. And it kind of compares it to biblical Christianity because apparently in some places they say that the Holy Spirit is not real or they say that Jesus is not God. So I love, like when I first got this, I was really drawn to this portion because I just loved seeing the different answers that everyone else had. Like for biblical Christianity, who created it? Jesus Christ. For Jehovah Witnesses, it tells you Charles, Taz, Russell, for Mormonism, they tell you Joseph Smith. And what I like is that they also put other names like Jehovah Witnesses. They have Watch Bible, Watchtower Bible. For Mormonism, they have Latter-day Saints. And a lot of these I've heard of, but I don't really know. So being able to come here and read this stuff and learn for myself what it is is amazing. So like the whole Jehovah Witness say the impersonal Holy Spirit is not God, but rather an invisible active force from Jehovah. They say that Jesus is not God. Um, for Mormonism, they say that Jesus is a separate God from the Father. They say the Holy Spirit is different from the Holy Ghost, which it's it's not. The Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost are the same. But I, I just, I love reading this. So, again, you have 
biblical Christianity, which I love that they say biblical Christianity. Okay. Um, you have Jehovah Witnesses, Mormonism, Seventh Day Ad Adventism, the Unification Church, Christian Science, the Unity School of Christianity, this New Age stuff. Then they talk about Wicca, which I never would have thought they would have compared it to Christianity, but I love that they have it in there. They have Scientology. They have Islam. Um, comparing Sunni and Shia Islam. I'm not sure what that is. Nation of Islam. The Baha'i Faith. Judaism. And then the Kabbalah. Hinduism. Like, they go in, you guys. Trans transcendent Meditation. You guys know. My throat right now is on fire. <laughs> um, but they have meditation. Buddhism. Like, I... <sighs> The comparisons that they do between the different cults and religions is amazing. And then you go into the denomination comparisons, which I think is another thing. Because um, a lot of denominations believe certain things and don't believe certain things from the Bible. So they have the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, the Lutheran, the Angelican, the Presbyterian, the Methodist, the Anabaptist, the Congregational, the Baptist, the Churches of Christ, and Pentecostal. I feel like they had Baptists twice. No, they had Anabaptists. Yeah, they had Anabaptists. So, and for that, they give you the founder and they, the adherents, the scripture, um, how God is, I guess, related to that Jesus, salvation, afterlife, the church, sacraments, other beliefs and practices, and divisions and trends. Um, then they give you other significant church bodies. Here you have family tree of denominations. So, I guess... It's just making a tree of each denomination, how they're correlated. Then we go into the essential doctrines. So, what do Christian believes? What are the essential doctrines? And then they also go back to breaking these doctrines down. So, they give you the explanation, what do I actually need to believe? And um, what what's at stake in the scripture that correlates with that doctrine? How do we know about essential doctrines to believe or not to believe? How other religious groups treat these um, essentials? And you have the actual doctrines here. Then you, they show you um, which ones accept it, which one redefine it, and which one deny it. And they do that for the Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, Scientology, and Christian Science. And you can see that Christian Science and Scientologists really much, pretty much deny a lot of it. Um, and then for Jehovah Witness, they have a balance, and then Latter-day Mormonism has a balance as well. Then they talk about the Trinity, the traits unique to God, and the traits of Jesus. And what I like is that they teach, it, teach um, like the different misunderstandings. So, um, why do Christians believe in the Trinity? And then they give you the different misunderstandings, and then how people use verses wrongly. To teach that Christ was created. So I. Stuff like this like really makes me happy. Um, divine attributes of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then this is another thing that I like. Um, they talk about Islam and Christianity. So um, the Muslims belief. The Christians belief. And the misunderstanding. And then how to correct that misunderstanding. So they give you the religious history. Who is God? The Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. The Holy Scriptures. And the prophets. And I. I really like that they got this bottom portion here that really tells you what the misunderstanding is between Muslims and Christians and how to correct that misunderstanding. Um, then you have practices and rituals, salvation and paradise, role of women, religion and culture. And um, then they have the do's and don'ts to reaching out to Muslims. Um, so they tell you what you should do and what you should not do. And I kind of appreciate this because where I live at, there are a lot of Jehovah Witnesses. There's actually a um, Jehovah Witness Center literally around the corner down a block from my house. And um, on like the main street, it's basically called Main Street, Central Avenue. Um, it's like the main strip to where I live where all the stores are. A lot of the times in the summer and the spring, they have the Jehovah Witness people out there. And... Um, they have, like, the older women and men, but then they have these group... Uh, I, I don't know if you guys seen them. Ooh, I'm so sorry. I don't know if you guys seen them in, like, your area. I know they have them heavy in New York, um, in the Bronx, specifically on, like, um, 3rd Avenue in the Bronx. But um, those men who, like, have, like, the dreadlocks and they wear the same outfit, sometimes it's black with the gold, or, like, they wear purple, um, they're heavy on my, like, in my area, and... 
I just have started to really get irritated with them. And it's nothing against them as people, but I just don't like how they approach people and how they hound people down. Um, recently, maybe about two or three weeks ago, it's not recently, but about two or three weeks ago, my mom and I and my sister were out um, getting my sister some shoes, sneakers, sorry. And like these young, I'm not even going to say young men, they're probably like in their 30s, late 20s, early 40s. But they were just outside yelling and ranting, trying to get people's attention, trying to prove to people about, you know, Jehovah and all this. And I'm just like, yo, it's just certain things you should do and should not do. You cannot pull people to God in such a rowdy way. You just, um, it, you just can't. And those men just kept going towards women, screaming at women, yelling at women to get their attention. And I, it irritated me to the point where I had to, to, to pray. Literally, I had to pray walking outside because it made no sense to me. And um, I just, I like that they have that in there. And it's nothing against those people who have other religions. Nothing against them at all. I am a Christian. I go to a non-denominational church. I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is what I believe. Um, so, yeah, nothing against any other religion. If you're Muslim, if you are, uh, go to a Baptist church or Pentecost. Like, I have nothing against it. It's just I feel like people need to understand there is a way to get other people pulled in to the kingdom, period. But, um... Moving on, you have a glossary of the Islamic and Arabic terms, which I enjoy. And then you have just your map index. <sighs> then your subject index. Then at the back, they give you the other um, books that they have. So like I said, there's a volume two. And the volume two talks about the Bible translations, why I trust the Bible, the heroes of the Old Testament, women of the Bible, the life of Paul, the names of Jesus, the Beatitudes, the Lord's Prayer, Favorite Bible verses, um, Christianity and Eastern religions. Um, then it talks about Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, magic, athe atheism. Um, the volume three talks about who you are in Christ, the, ass the assurance of salvation, what the Bible says about forgiveness. Um, you have the Rose Guide to the Tabernacle, the Rose Guide to the Temple, the Rose Then and Now Bible Maps Atlas, um, the Bible and Christian History Timelines, and... Jesus' family tree. And then that is it. Um, so this is considered a reference resource book, and I highly agree with it. Um, I would definitely say if you can get this, definitely buy it. It's amazing. I love it. I use it literally almost out of seven days a week. I'm using it probably four or five days a week, um, especially when I'm reading biblical fiction and I want to picture a location or understand a tribe or understand who a person is and who they came from. I will come to this and pull out every single map, the timeline, like everything. I, it's amazing. I don't know what else to say about it. I highly recommend it um, for sure. I think you would enjoy having this as a resource, especially when you're doing your own personal studies. I definitely, like I said, want to get physical copies of volume two and three. I do have the ebook copy of it. But it's not the same vibe as having like a physical copy. So I'm definitely going to work on getting them. They are a little over $20. But again, I'll leave links to um, the Amazon down below as well as ChristianBook.com. I think those are the only two places I know for sure where I can get them. I'll also leave a, a link to the actual website for um, Rose Publishing so you guys can check it out. But um, yeah. That's it for this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, if you want to see a video on how I specifically use this when I'm doing my different like things, such as like Bible study or when I am um, reading biblical fiction, just let me know. I'm going to end this video here because my coffee should probably have cooled down. Um, and let me just show you guys my cup. I got this cup probably like three or four years ago. It's so cute. Um, being a makeup artist and, a, and um, a makeup lover, I just thought it was cute because I had little lip prints on it. My coffee should be cooled down. Hold on. Yeah, it's not as hot, but uh, I'm going to drink my coffee and my water at the same time because my throat burning. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.